Hello everyone and welcome to TK Friday. Today we'll be working on an image called Derby Shardells. This photo is by Keith Simpson. This is a TK8 full edit video starting out in Lightroom, working with a linear profile. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'm so glad you're here with me today. This is going to be a fun tutorial. You can download this image uh, provided by Keith Simpson. Thank you so much, Keith. This is a raw file so you could start out in Lightroom with me. Uh, grab a linear profile from uh, Tony Kuiper. I will link in the description below where you can get linear profiles for your cameras as well as the website for uh, Tony Kuiper's TK8 plugin for Photoshop and different training videos and remember right now there is a sell going on my dk15 code will get you 20 percent off anything on tony's channel right now and sean bagshaw has his new video course on there as well so check that out if you haven't picked that up yet and again thank you keith simpson for this beautiful image of the derby shire dells in england thank you so much and if anyone has an image they would like me to work on i'm going to put my email address up on the screen right now just email me probably the best way of getting me the image is through like a google drive or something like that just email me and we can discuss how we can do it. And it would be great if I could share it with the rest of the TK Friday viewers. That way they can follow along and it's a great way of learning and you'll be helping everybody out. And I want to thank you for that in advance. Well, let's get started. Here is the raw file with the uh, linear profile attached to it. Canon 5D Mark IV profile, which you can pick up at the linear profile repository site. I'm just going to click auto. This is my workflow. I click auto and that generally gets me right in the ballpark. You can see my black levels clipped a little bit. So what I'll do is just get rid of that little bit of clipping there in the blacks right about there. And um, I think I might just give it a little bit more contrast. Uh, let's see right about here. As well as highlights, I think the highlights are looking pretty good. No clipping in the highlights. Shadows, I think I'll open up the shadows a little bit more. Maybe right there. And the whites and the black point look good. I think I will pull back my white point just a tiny wee bit. Right there. And I think I might add just a slight bit more vibrance and i think the saturation is good and then as far as detail this is a very low iso image i'm not even going to mess with noise reduction i'm going to set the default sharpening at 40 well actually i'm not going to set it because it's already there no noise reduction and then as far as lens corrections i'm going to remove chromatic aberrations i always do that and enable my profile corrections and that's all i'm going to do in lightroom and already this image looks really nice uh, and it's a really good exposure keith you got a great exposure on this image i'm just going to right click it and edit in photoshop 2022 and we'll get started and here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm not going to do the um, roadmap. But if you miss the roadmap, let me know in the comment section. Say, hey, Dave, we missed that roadmap. Bring it back. So I just want, it's a full edit today, and I don't want it to get too long. So I'm going to forgo the roadmap, but I'll explain everything I'm doing along the way. I'm going to set myself up for success by making three selections. I'm going to select the sky. So let's go ahead and select the sky. And then I'll go ahead and select the foreground and these foreground rocks here. Those are the three selections I'm going to make in advance. Okay, so we'll start off with the sky. I'm going to do something right here, and I love this tool in TK8, the edit selection tool, because check this out. I'm going to click this. And you'll notice it did a really good selection, but it, it messed up on the foreground here a little bit and on the sky. But if you'll notice inside here, you have these dodge and burn tools. So what I'm going to do is grab this dodge tool. And what I'll do is just dodge this sky and just clean up this selection a little bit. Just on the sky area here. See how that just turns white? Pretty cool, right? So that cleans it up. And then I'm going to grab the burn tool and then clean up the foreground just a little wee bit. And here, just like that. Isn't that cool? So, I mean, this can really save you a lot of time. So I really appreciate the fact that Tony put these 
tools inside of here. I'm going to grab the stodge tool one more time and just clean this edge up here. It wouldn't really matter, but I'm going to clean it up. And now we also have in here the save right here. So we can save our selection right here. So let's click save. And now let's go ahead and call this sky and we'll save that as a channel. So I'll click OK. And you'll notice that right now it saved a sky. Now I thought I could go ahead and just invert that and save this out as the foreground. But if I do, it'll invert this sky selection. So here's what you need to do. Click on this icon right here for the selection. That loads your selection back up. Now, we don't see the marching ants around here now, but they're there. They're just hidden. But you can see the selection indicator here shows that we do have a selection. Just click this invert button on the TK8 CX panel or combo panel. That'll invert it. And now we can go ahead and click this icon to save it. And we'll call this foreground and click OK. And now, as you can see in my channels, I have a sky selected and a foreground selected. Okay, let's go ahead and deselect the selection. And now I'll grab my object selection tool in the lasso mode. I may speed the video up here, but I'm just going to go ahead and select these foreground rocks. Now, when I need to add to a selection, I just hold the shift key down like here and just add to that selection. Now, this rock will be a little stubborn on me here. It's not too bad. I'm holding the shift and getting these two areas. And now this back rock, it'll give me some trouble, as you'll see here. So I'm going to grab the object selection tool and just fill this in here now to subtract you hold down the option key to subtract and just uh, drag over the section to add now that i've made this selection on these rocks let's come up to the edit selection tool in the tk8 panel and what i want to do here is click on this uh, uh water drop which is actually a gaussian blur dialog and i'm going to add like 20 pixels roughly of blur on the edge there just so things blend in and click ok and now i'm going to save this as let's just call it uh foreground rocks and click ok and now we can go ahead and x out of here and we have that selection saved so let's go ahead and deselect that selection you'll see there's the foreground rocks right there and now that we saved out those channels, we set ourselves up for success. We can start flying through this edit. The first thing I want to do is work on the foreground, add a little bit more contrast to it. And to do that, we're going to come up here to my channels and grab that foreground. And we're going to get the mass calculator tool. We're going to click the intersect button. Let's X out of here. Let's go into the luminosity mask. And what I want to use here is I believe a lights one. Yes, I want a lights one. We're going to go ahead and click equals. And then we're going to simply output this to a color grading tool. So now if we take a look at this color grading mask, let's click this icon here. We can see I'm targeting lights one. Okay, so let's click this again. And now we see the image. So we're going to click on the midtones, and I just want to lighten up the lights ones, but I'm going to use a midtones adjustment on a curves to do it. So I'm just going to grab this midtone slider and start to drag it to the right, and that will lighten up the lights one of this foreground. Here's the before. And here's the after. Isn't that beautiful? Now, remember, I'm adding contrast to the foreground. So I added some lights to lights one. And now what we're going to do is X out of this color grading tool, go back to my channels, grab the foreground channel and this time we're going to click mass calculator again we're going to intersect it let's x out of here but this time i want to intersect it with darks i want to target darks and i'm thinking darks probably darks four here's darks one two three and here's darks four so there's darks four i'm going to click equals and now i have this foreground with darks four on it i'm going to output it to a color grading tool click on this gray midtone block and we'll take that slider and we'll darken those dark four tones by dragging it to the left and look how we can add some beautiful contrast into that image. I'm going to take that over a good bit because, again, I'm targeting darks four. Here's the before and here's the after. But you see that nice little contrast in there? Now, if we look at the overall contrast change, here's the before contrast and here is the after. All done through a lights one and a darks four mask. Two separate color grading adjustments. So now I like the foreground. So now I'm going to move into the sky. So let's X out of this color grading tool. Let's go back to my channels. We have the sky mask made for us. So let's click on sky. Let's click on the mask calculator and the intersection tool. 
Let's X out of here. And this time, I'm going to go back to luminosity masking. But this time, I'm going to intersect with a mid-tones one. I just want to target mid-tones one in the sky. I just want to darken up the mid-tones a bit. So let's click Equals. And as you can see, I have the sky's mid-tone selected, output into a color grading tool, very simple. And now we're gonna click on that mid-tone block and we're just gonna start to darken up that sky by dragging this slider to the left. You see how it darkens up? And I could take it a good bit because if we take a look at this mask, you can see it's a very delicate mask. In other words, it's only selecting mid-tones one, okay? I could have chose mid-tones two and I would have moved this slider less, but I, chose midtones one because I felt that would be the best adjustment. Okay, so let's go back and look at the image again. So let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after, but you see how it nicely balances out that sky. And next I'm noticing an issue with the blue saturation in the sky. I think I need to work on that a little bit. It's a little bit too oversaturated. I'll show you how I take care of that next. Let's X out of the color grading tool back to my channels. And again, setting yourself up for success is great. So click on sky. You already have this mask made. Let's intersect it. What do you think I would intersect it with this time? Let's uh, click on the X here, X out of here. If you're thinking the uh, color masks because we got blue in the sky, I think you're in the right direction. So let's go ahead and click this icon. And now let's select some blue in here. I think right here represents a lot of that blue in there. I'm gonna click okay. But look how nice that mask is. Now, I think that mask is really good. You know, I can make it a little lighter by dragging this to the right a little bit, but not too much. I think it's really good right where it is. Let's click equals, and now we just have a sky with the blue selected. Let's output it this time. Now, I don't want to use a color grading tool this time because I want to work in saturation, so let's output it to a hue saturation adjustment. And what I want to do here is reduce the saturation a little bit Maybe, not a lot actually, but maybe right around here, like a minus eight. And I think I may want to lighten up the blue a little bit. So let's take this lightness and let's adjust this to the right a little bit. Not much, maybe like here. Here is the before and here is the after. Okay, so again, the before and the after. It's a subtle adjustment. I may take this back just a tiny bit more, maybe like a minus 15. Here's the before and here's the after. Yeah, I think that looks better. And remember, if you want to see what that mask looks like, just click these uh, double arrows. That's your mask. Click that again and you're back to the image. And let's just uh, close this properties panel. All right, I think we're moving in the right direction. I may want to tone down some of these really highlighted areas just a little bit and I'll do that next. Back up to my channels and let's grab the sky again. Mass calculator, intersect tool, X out of here. I'm going to go back to luminosity mass. Now remember, I'm going to hit these really highlighted areas in the sky. That's lights one, that's lights two, and there's lights three. I think lights three does a really good job. Let's click equals, and now we've intersected that sky with lights three. Now we're going to output it to a color grading tool. And again, I'm going to use the mid-tone. This is pretty much my standard procedure for this. Click on the mid-tone block. And I just want to pull back some of the extra lightness on these really hot spots here. And they're not blown out by any means, but I just want to pull them back. Just like that, okay? So here is the before, and here is the after. Subtle, but I think very effective. And again, if you want to see what that mass looks like, just click these double arrows. There's that mass targeting just those light areas, right? Okay. And let's take a look at the image again. And again, one more time, before and after. Subtle, but sometimes you know what? Subtle is the way to go. Overdoing things in editing can look really garish at the end of your edit. Let's keep going. There's some purple flowers down in here. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click this plus to zoom in a few times here. And I just want to come and show you these purple flowers down in here. Can you see them over in here? All these little purple flowers here. I know they're a minor detail, but let's bring up some of the saturation on those. This is a real easy adjustment. Let's X out of the color grading tool. Let's go to our color mask, click this icon, and let's just click on 
some of the purple on this flower. Click OK and look how nicely that targets that. Now let me go ahead and uh, fit this to the screen by clicking this icon right here. And as you can see, we've nicely selected those purple flowers right there. Now we could go ahead and lighten them up here by lightening this up. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's lighten that up right there. Let's output this to a hue saturation adjustment. And now let's go ahead and zoom in a couple times here. And let me go ahead and move this into position so we can see these flowers here. Now what I want to do is take up the saturation. So watch the flower. I'm going to drag the saturation to the right. And I think maybe right around here. And let's give them a little bit of extra lightness. And let me drag the lightness slider to the right a little bit. Maybe right around there and maybe even a little bit more saturation. So here is the before and here is the after. So now they're just going to pop a little bit, which I think is going to be nice. Let's go ahead and fit this back to screen. Here is the before. So look at the flowers down in the lower right corner. Here's the before and here's the after. But now we can definitely see them. And this is just attention to details. It's very important. I haven't forgot about these foreground rocks. I'll be addressing them shortly, but I want to address this area back here on the left side of the foreground upper part. It looks a little bit hazy to me, but we have a dehaze action, so let's come in here in our TK actions, and let's find the dehaze action, which is right here. So let's click on that dehaze action, and as you can see, it's removed the haze back from here, but it's dehazing the entire image, which is not what I want, but we'll take care of that, and we'll do that by shutting off this layer by clicking this eye right here. Now it is gone. Now we need to select this area here. I'm going to use an object selection tool to do that. So let me click on my object selection tool. Now to select this area, I need to be on a pixel layer. So I'm going to click on this background layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a loose selection around here and let the artificial intelligence grab this selection. And then anywhere it misses a place, like right here, I'm going to hold my shift key down and grab this stubborn area just like that. And now that I have that selection, I'm going to come back up to this dehaze group and come to my channels and click on active selection. And then I'm gonna output it to a layer mask right here. So click this and it puts that layer mask right there, right? Now the layer is shut off, so I need to turn the layer back on. But when I do, you notice I've dehazed that area. So check this area out. Here's the before and here is the after. Pretty cool, right? Now take notice right here, there's an adjust dehaze here. So let's go ahead and click this, double click this right here. This is a brightness contrast adjustment layer and it defaults at minus 30 and contrast at 100. I wanna lighten that up so I'm gonna take the brightness and start to drag it to the right and I'm thinking maybe right around like a minus three. Let's take a look, here's the before and here's the after. But notice how we got rid of that haze and it's lightened up a bit. I like it. I think it looks really good. I'm going to close this properties panel here. Next, I want to work in these foreground rocks. So let's come here and uh, click on my channels. Click on foreground rocks. I'm going to use a mass calculation. I'm going to intersect them. Let's X out of here. Luminosity mask. I'm just going to intersect these with a lights one. Click equals. And now I've selected those rocks with a lights one. And then I want to output that to a color grading tool. And now I'm going to get the gray block for the midtones. And just I just want to darken these up a little bit. They're in the foreground. They're a little too light, but they're not too bad. So I just want to bring them down a little bit in terms of lightness. And I also want to cool them off a little bit. There's a little bit of warmth on them, but I want them to look more like rocks. So I'm just going to drag this and just make them more gray by pulling this into blue a little bit right there. So let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. Kind of takes the edge off them and now they look a little more on the gray side like rocks. And I like that. And always remember, if you want to look at your mask here, uh, just make sure you're on that layer and click the double arrow icon and you can see that mask. Click it again and you'll go back to your image. Next up, it's going to be a little bit of dodging and burning in the foreground. One of my favorite things to do, this is where you get to pull out the creative artistic license and just dodge and burn the areas that you want for 
really artistic expression in my opinion. I'll start out with dodging. Let's X out of the color grading tool. Let's go right to luminosity masks. And we need, I want to dodge lights. So there's lights one, here is lights two. I think lights two will target the areas that I want. The lighter areas will get the adjustment. I'm just going to output this to a dodging tool right here. It's going to give me a gray layer. I'm going to click on this. And basically what I have is a gray layer in the overlay blend mode with a white brush and I'm dodging through a selection. So kind of dodging through training wheels. I'm going to set my dodge tool to like, say like 40%. I'm going to get a decent sized, very soft edge brush. Cause remember I'm painting through a selection and I'm just going to start dodging areas and add some creative artistic expression here. I'm not going to get every light area, but just the areas that I think will look good dodged a bit. Now, when you're doing this, just take some time. I sped up the video a little bit here, but take your time and, you know, get it right. Play some nice music or whatever and just enjoy this experience because this is where you really get to create. And I'm going kind of fast here, but again, when you're doing this back at home, take your time and just bring it out just the way you want it to be brought out because this is where you express yourself. Let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the before and here's the after, but isn't that nice? It really adds a lot of nice artistic expression. Now, if you hold your option or alt key down on the and click the eye of this layer, you can actually see where you've painted. See all those areas with white paint that has been painted through the selection. Then hold your option or alt key down again and click the eye again and you're back to the image. And now let's do some burning. Let's come back to luminosity mask. So click this icon and we need to find what kind of dark tones we want to burn. This is uh, darks one, darks two, here's darks three, and I think I'm going to settle with darks three. I'm going to burn all these dark three areas and the light areas are the darks three. Okay. So let's output this to a burn tool. So click right here on the left side. This will give you a gray layer in the soft light blend mode with a black brush. And again, you're painting through a selection. I'm going to start out with 40% and just dark areas and a nice soft brush. I'm going to start burning. Now, every time you lift your brush, you're going to add a little extra paint. Uh, you're starting at 40%. You're not actually adding 40% more paint, but another degree of amount will be added. I'm not sure what the actual math is on that, but I'm just going to go ahead and start uh, burning some of these areas. And this actually adds like some depth and dimension. Now I don't hit all the dark areas, but I'll hit some of them, even on these rocks here. It's going to be nice. And again, take your time here. I went ahead and sped up the video because I don't want this to get too long. And But take your time and, and just get it right. But you just really want to just darken up the areas you want. Remember, you're trying to add some depth and dimension to your image. And um, this is really going to help give you that. And it's also going to let this image become your very own because you're adding your own paint strokes to the image. So you take the artist brush in hand and you start to make the image tailored just the way you like it. And I think I'm good for now. Let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the before and here's the after. Now, if you felt you're a little heavy handed, you could take this opacity and you can start to slide this to the left and just ease up on it a bit. I'm going to try like around 79. Here's the before and here's the after. I think that looks a little more natural. Now let's take a look without dodging and burning. This is without dodging and burning, and this is with dodging and burning. But isn't that nice? And I went really fast here. I would definitely take my time and go slower. And if you do, you will get better results. But I'm happy with these results. We are almost done. Just a couple more things. I want to add a little bit of saturation to the overall image, kind of like a vibrance adjustment. Just pull up some weak colors. And to do that, we're going to use this icon right here. This opens up your uh, vibrance and saturation mask. Now, follow me closely here. I did a video on this in the past, but what you want to do is get your histogram, okay? And get your histogram, and we want to come into Vibrance Mask. Go to the first Vibrance Mask here. And basically, what you want to do, I'm going to change this channel from colors to 
uh, RGB. What I want to do is start moving this histogram till it comes over and touches this left edge. This is how you can get the perfect vibrance mask. So let's click on two and you notice how it's starting to move over. Let's click on three. One more, let's click on four, and it touches that edge there, and that's our mask right there. And we can shut the histogram off now. And now what we want to do is output this to a hue and saturation layer, which is right here. So click that, and that applies that mask to that hue saturation layer. And now what I want to do is just build up the saturation on the weaker colors and that's what that mask is targeting so let's take this and drag it to the right and i think right around a 36 here here is the before and here is after it's subtle but it's a mild adjustment bump and then i what i want to do is it made my blues a little too oversaturated so what i'll do is come into the master and click on blues and I think I'm just going to pull back the saturation on the blues a little bit, maybe to like around a minus 32. And let's also grab cyans because you're going to have cyan in the sky too. And let's pull that two back to about a minus 32. So let's take a look. Uh, let me close this properties panel. Here is the before and here is the after. But isn't that nice? A nice, subtle saturation boost in the weaker colors giving us a nice little color pop let's take a look at this saturation mask by clicking this icon right here but again all the light tones here we're getting the extra saturation so does a really nice job click the icon again and we're back to our image the last thing i want to do is add a little bit of a vignette and let's just come to our tk actions and click on vignette just a basic vignette here Give it a second or two to do its little thing. And I'm going to accept the radius just the way it defaults. Click OK. Now that's too much. So let's take this opacity and drag it the whole way off. And I just want a little subtle vignette. And I think right around 20. Here is the before. And here is after. See how subtle it is? But it, it just keeps our attention focused into the image. I might even come up a little bit more. Let's take it up to about a 24. Here's the before and here is the after. So I really like it. Now, if we want to see the overall before and after, we can option or alt click on the background layer. Or if you made the action that I told you about, you can click your before and after action. So let's click this. Here's the before and here is the after. A beautiful image, but with some nice subtle finessing to it i think we end up with a fantastic image give this one a try and thank you keith simpson for letting us use your image much appreciated sir well there it is that was a full edit of the derby shire dales image by keith simpson a beautiful place someday i'd love to go here it looks like a beautiful place to sit and relax if you enjoyed the tutorial today please give it a like and share it with your friends and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe click that bell notification icon then every time i upload a new tutorial you'll be notified about it well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.